and welcome to Sooner Random. I'm Colin Cunningham, and I am here with polymath, man who likes to take things apart, and active member of NYC Resistor, Tremel Hudson. How are you doing, Tremel? Pretty good. Glad to be here, Colin. Good. I'm glad you are here, too, or else I'd today I think that'd be talking to an empty space, which is, which is really good. No, but this is uh, light years better. Because you've brought some interesting things to talk about. You, you, you've covered a lot of areas. You are, you, 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 in the spirit of the show, the pseudo-random kind of thing, you get around. You cover a lot of stuff. You, I, I enjoy doing random things. You do. It's, you know, objectively random, perhaps, but things that draw your interest and you become embedded in them and engrossed in them and grok them and, 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 and then do cool stuff with them. I, I find uh, I, I can pay attention to things for you know, a few months and then right. and frequently I go off and look for, them, for something else that's shiny, something else that's uh, uh, new. But um, Have you found there's, there's a, a certain period to, the, to that deep interest, like three months? Is I, four yeah, months three to six it? months, I think. And, um, I think I, I've, I'm having the same phenomenon that I'm experiencing that makes sense. It's a good thing. Yeah. But you can loop back and incorporate different areas that you've, you've, you've picked up on. Absolutely. And, and uh, uh, the, the vector display project is one that I've been working on for um, about a year, which uh, makes it quite a, a long-term project on, oh, wow. on many of that my... Stuck, huh? um, and uh, partly because I found some great collaborators to work on it with. Um, I've uh, explored some different uh, technologies, different uh, ways to apply it. And uh, it's a fun mix between, um, uh, between gaming and art and uh, also retro computing, which is another really right. one of my so fun you're, hobbies. You're, you're pulling in a lot of different areas. Now, we, we just jumped in and mentioned the topic, but we say vector displays. We're talking about not a, as opposed to a raster display, right? Exactly. So, so, so the basic difference is, it, like, can you just lay out the basic difference between a raster and a vector display? So with a, with a uh, conventional uh, uh, raster display, the, the TV scans um, just line by line. And when it gets to the bottom, it goes back to the top. It's and drawing the whole screen. It draws it's the whole screen. Over it like a grid. And it draws it at a constant rate. And you effectively have pixels. And uh, video games from uh, the early uh, uh, 70s and early 80s were really limited to how many pixels they could draw. Mm -hmm. So uh, games like um, uh, Star Wars, which was very popular, uh, had a uh, roughly, uh, I think, 128 by 64 or 128 by 80 uh, frame buffer. Um, in order to do more than that, they would have had to spend uh, tens of thousands of dollars on video memory. Mm -hmm. Right, which probably would have been cool, but yes. even better, limitations, breeding awesomeness is what they did do. So um, uh, if we could bring up the, uh, the Star Wars image, I don't know. Right, Phil, we have... Ah, there we go. So uh, on the right, we see a, uh, the bitmap raster uh, version of Star Wars, mm -hmm. which, as you can see, it has huge pixels. They're not super high resolution, versus the vector version of that same game that at the time had a, uh, almost a, a 4K resolution, uh, that it had 14-bit uh, um, uh, digital analog, excuse me, you, had 12-bit uh, uh, digital analog converters. Okay. Uh, so that you, you would see that they say that's the equivalent of a 4K resolution, obviously with its own specific uh, character and limitations. Right, and so the big difference here is that it's not being drawn uh, horizontal line by horizontal line, but instead, uh, the, the lines are being drawn uh, diagonally or uh, in circles, and this gives you um, uh, super high resolution without the pixels. So the but gun goes where it needs to exactly. go. Exactly. Uh, the drawback is they tended to be um, just line art. They t right. tended to be uh, uh, either monochrome or very primary colors. Uh, you didn't have a lot of um, photorealism. Um, true. But when you compare the gaming experience of uh, you know, the, the, the 128 pixel uh, bitmap display to this super high resolution uh, you know, so with sharp. very fine details, so sharp. So intense. And they had such a unique quality um, that uh, you know, where the, the lines were sharp, the brights were just had the, mm -hmm. this overwhelming intensity. Most people will be probably the most familiar with asteroids and for some reason, that seemed so extra bright. I guess because it was such was it small, there, there, it was a pretty sparsely imaged exactly, game. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the gun was kind of laid in to those <laughs> spots and made it really 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So a comparison. Yeah, so, again. so again, you know, we can see that difference. You know, just the lines are straight. The circles are. You know, in this case, they're built out of line segments, but they are. Um, uh, you know, the, the segments are very straight, and that, that's again a limitation of the CPUs at the time. It was they they didn't want to do a lot of complex math for drawing the circles, so they uh, they, they generate segments. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, very uh, detailed. You can see the uh, ref um, uh, you know that they can even fit some text and some yep. star fields. We could, we could do the subtle, yeah, small stars. I actually grew up. This was one of the games that I played the most. But I, I did play it on a raster display on a, a Commodore, and uh, it would have been, I think, a magnitude greater experience if it was a vector display. Right. And so in order to, uh, to, to display these, uh, these sort of games on modern hardware, uh, we needed to do, uh, design um, uh, a custom interface board. Uh, we need to generate uh, analog voltages at a very high rate. We need to be able to generate them without uh, interruptions while we're um, while we're, we're generating these outputs. Because if if you pause the beam, if you pause uh, generating these analog voltages, the beam will sit at one spot, and you'll get a very characteristic um, uh, hot spot at that this point. This is a complex operation controlling this for all these different variables. I mean, if and then sit too long. You have transit time between points when you're running without lighting the display. Exactly. And the uh, also then listening to the USB to be able to receive uh -huh. uh, the next set of line segments to be drawn. Um, you, can't, uh, you can't pause the, the beam updates to go listen to the USB. So for that reason, uh, we used a, a fairly uh, complex uh, uh, um, microcontroller built on uh, one of the ARM cores that has a DMA engine. Uh, so if we can go and bring that. Um, this is your first version of the board. This is the first version of the board, and the uh, more recent versions are very similar. But the uh, using a TNC three, which uh, has the ability to do uh, DMA, so the software can render, uh, it can receive the the line segments from the serial port, mm -hmm. generate the voltage the. Uh, the voltages that will need to be um, drawn, and okay, then it has two uh, dual DACs. Exactly, and then it uses the DMA engines to output those to uh, dual 12-bit uh, DACs. Right. Uh, in this case, uh, it's using uh, the microchip MCP4922. Uh, 4922s, yes, uh, which are uh, reasonably high-speed 12-bit um, uh, DACs. Mm -hmm. So we can we can update them with a. Uh, I believe we're pushing a, almost a 30 megahertz clock to them, which is generates really quite nice lines. Mm. Um, this first version of the board, I had some op amps to try to adjust the analog voltages. Uh, my expertise is not in analog circuit design, mm -hmm. so as a result, uh, I ended so up you, bypassing them and just doing zero to five volts uh, right. on the so, output. So you. You added op amps in the second version, right? Is that uh, this all so of? Not in the first. It's not here. But. Th this one has op amps. All of those oh, one percent passive components are uh, trying to uh, do the the op amp okay. operations, and it turns out none of them worked. So uh, I just had a jumper straight from the from the DAC over to the outputs, and um, yeah, it, but you buffered them somewhere else. So exactly. You can, yeah. you can shift it outside. And for displays like the Vectrex, uh, 0 to 5 volts gives you pretty much the full screen. So that, that works well. Okay. So, and this was, basically, we, and we started getting into the, the depth of it here, but, but the, people are able to play these vector games on uh, a MAME, right? That's right. Software That's right. Software emulation on their computers. Uh, but it's funny, they're being converted, the code that was trying to write to a vector display is being converted through some effort, I, I imagine, in the MAME software to run on the raster display. And then you took it upon yourself to write a code, uh, an addition to the, the MAME code that would bypass the, the rasterization and, and take the vector instructions and put them right out to your board. Exactly. Right? And MAME uh, is doing a lot of work to try to create uh, sort of vector emulation, so they they emulate the flicker, right, they, they emulate the, the sort of the brightness, and they emulate the glow, and they're doing this all with 
fairly uh, high-end graphics cards with OpenGL, uh -huh. and uh, we don't need to do any of that. There's, we, there's a humor to that. Yes. So you're looking at the, like, we don't have to fake it, guys. Yeah, we, 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 get, uh, we get Flickr, we get Glow, mm -hmm. we get Defocus, we get all that stuff for free mm -hmm. um, because we're actually driving real vector displays. Right. And uh, th there's, there's a few different sort of display technologies uh, or displays available. Um, the Vectrex was a uh, home vector arcade uh, console. Um, and that's, that's a readily available on eBay, really easy to convert. To, I have to thank uh, Tony DeCola for sending me this very shiny, very, very lovely shirt. It's a marvelous shirt. Yes, I'm a fan. Um, and and the, uh, it's really easy to bypass the Vectrex uh, controller board uh, inside the, uh, the housing and then plug uh, my board, the, the V.ST board, okay, so, into it. So, so people can actually pick one of these up uh, off of you know eBay or whatever, and and open it up and pretty safe to assume as long as it's functioning, they they can add the ability to run their own stuff on exactly. it. Exactly. Use it as a display. And uh, it works great. They're reasonably uh, priced. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got super um, uh, control over brightness and intensity. They're they're fun displays. Um, they're also fairly large uh, because they're uh, magnetically deflected, so you can get you know a reasonable size display. They're not as fast as electrostatic displays, which are uh, vector scopes. Okay. And, and uh, vector scopes are readily available right, from uh, fr from uh, yeah. uh, TV stations that have been going digital. So okay. th these were used for doing color bar calibration and uh, things of that nature. Right. They usually have a, a, an overlay um, directly uh, embedded in the screen. Right. So. Yeah, so that overlay lets you calibrate your color bars mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. Um, most of them have an XY mode, uh, which is what uh, we're taking advantage of here. Yeah, definitely. You, it looks really clean. You can also use uh, uh, just an a old CRT analog oscilloscope, also readily available right. from auction sites and places that are phasing them out. Uh, these are uh, electrostatic displays, so the, the flexion angles that they can generate is actually quite low, which is why they all have um, sort of, you know, a, a 10 centimeter or so display, but then they're Very super too, deep. Yeah. Um, uh, however, uh, I, I picked up several basically for the, for the price of shipping. Um, gorgeous. Yeah. Another really fun technology that uh, I had high hopes for uh, were laser galvos which, uh, you know, laser, right. laser displays... a uh, heck of a bright display, talk about intensity. Yeah, and lasers are effectively vector displays, that they're steering that laser right. around to make the, uh, the image. Right. The problem is uh, those mirrors have mass, and uh, inexpensive uh, galvos uh, can only do, um, you know, 30 to 60,000 points per second, mm -hmm. uh, but we're dealing with it's signals... a lot of... of mechanical device. Yes, yeah. and we're, we're asking for uh, things in the megahertz range, so it's order of magnitude away. Right. So um, but you can see, you, know, you, can, you can make out the Tempest board uh, yeah, being I projected there. The the level. Yeah. Um, uh, but it was painful to look at, it was so, so <laughs> flickery. It was so bright or flickery. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and also it seared my retina. Yeah, th and of course we're... Um, so you projected it directly on the eye, right? Right, so yeah. we're... we're you know, not shown here is that everyone in a 10 meter uh, radius around this room is wearing yeah, you know, the, yeah, the yeah, red safety bad. goggles yeah. and um, were they, really? they, they were, they were I, okay. I bought a, bought a uh, big box of them and handed them out at, <laughs> at Resistor. Good. Yeah, don't play with your cat with a green laser. It's no, good. well and this is a one watt so it's okay. yeah, yep. painful. Mm -hmm. um, one of the fun things though uh, that you do with, with these is um, uh, you do get some fun glitches, and uh, the displays all require different tuning. So we mentioned the electrostatic displays were really mm -hmm. fast. We mentioned that the lasers were too slow. You're going to become um, really familiar with all the quirks of these different yes. designs as you test on them. So uh, when I took the, uh, the board um, that uh, was driving the, uh, um, just a, a CRT uh, oscilloscope and first, sort of, first hooked it up to the Vectrex, uh, it gave us something that approximated the Utah teapot. Okay, so you're trying to display this uh, classic example, and as you saw, teapot, which is a 3D, uh, you know, polygonal teapot, and that is looks like um, perhaps a Matisse or uh, some sort of a gestural rendition of it. 
It's very abstract. It's quite, it's quite fun, but you, you can see there's just not enough bandwidth. It's so. beautiful, actually. It's really, I like it. Um, and as, this as is a slightly top, slightly. Yeah, up, we're, up it was a rotating teapot demo. Right. Um, so as we, uh, as I sort of tweaked the timing parameters, um, it gets a little bit better. Right. And okay, so, so we can see here it's it's trying to make it to to points to, to spots, but it's like uh, it's already been called to the next one. That's exactly what's happening. So these, these kind of like busier loops around them and everything. So the uh, uh, but we, we can start to see you know it's definitely a teapot, um, and yeah. with a few more tweaks and uh, th these are all uh, compile time constants uh, in, in the firmware for the board, um, and we can okay. finally get something that that looks like a recognizable teapot. Um, it's tighter and now... And okay. so now you can see want. it's hitting the points. Uh, this also demonstrates one of the really fun parts about vector oh. displays is that when the beam comes back to a point, mm -hmm. it gets brighter. Yep. You, you get a hot spot where, you know, where, uh, where it hits that multiple points. Right. So it keeps pegging the same uh, phosphor layer and lighting it up. Is, so I would, I would actually, I would like the ability to, to, you know, a dial to turn it back a little bit. <laughs> like maybe in software, I can just like dial down a value and, you know, go loopy, a little bit loopy. Yeah, uh, and there, there are compile time constants where you can tweak that. And uh, there are right now. You left I, it out. I, I mean, you left it's it in out there, in the yeah. Like that. And right now, there, there's actually uh, you have to select what sort of display do you have. Mm -hmm. You know, a vector okay. scope, a vectrex, an oscilloscope, um, and a few other different types to um, to try to have some reasonable preset parameters for, for it. Um, uh, it's a lot of fun now. I, I really want to play around with one. We, we do have, we, we brought a Vectrex. We have a Vectrex, we and we have, it, uh, we have it rendering some, um, uh, some, okay. some 3D. So let's, we already have it looped up to our overhead yep. here. So, so let's go ahead and... Can I, do you have uh, this? Is this what it looks like? Oh, yeah. Oh, Just, yeah. Um, with this is your laptop with a vector X this, display. Yes. Uh, th this actually also demonstrates a uh, fun glitch. Uh, you can see it's supposed to be a bunch of um, sort of the, the quicks pattern as shown on the laptop. But a modem manager oh. has started sending garbage to the serial port, trying to initialize the, uh, the board as if it were a modem. And so that, that AT command has been interpreted uh, and it's basically shifted the, um, uh, the XY offsets. It's made like a really hip storefront display. Yeah, it's one of the great things about a lot of the yeah, uh, a lot of this is you do end up with some really fun glitches. Um, right. Oh. Oh, yeah. yes. Uh. <laughs> Speaking of fun glitches, th this actually uh, is great because it, it also demonstrates sort of how the disconnected line segments are being drawn. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. so, yeah, so we can see it loops around and it does those last filler segments at the end of the Tempest level. Right, it's trying to do you know as much continuous line segment right. as it can, sort of a almost a traveling salesman problem. Um, this is also another option I want with uh, my main uh, vector display. <laughs> well, we'll have to uh, see about adding yeah. that in. Okay. In yeah. this case, uh, uh, this glitch is being caused by uh, uh, either a high impedance, or excuse me, a high inductance or capacitance in the uh, the x-axis driver on the oscilloscope. You can see that the y-axis line up perfectly, but it's just the x-axis mm -hmm. is where it's uh, getting all wiggly. So why, was there a reason the x-axis was, was different? Uh, my guess is that th this particular scope, it's, this was a 1940s um, oscilloscope that I was playing with, uh, was not designed for, uh, as an x-y display. So in most oscilloscopes, you're, the beam is constantly uh, going from one side to the other and then jumping back and oh. one side to the other. So it, it's not having to make sort of a, um, uh, a, a back and forth motion. That's not something you have to worry about. It's like we're only going forward and, you know. Yeah, and then making a big step back. Yeah. Um, however, it, it does make for a, a very, very fun uh, glitch. Right, it's a nice little discovery. Um, I, I, I want to see more things deconstructed. I think I see the world that way sometimes. Yeah. A little bit. So, uh, yeah, so, so um, one thing that also really excites me about these displays is not just the gaming, which is fun, but right. the fact that uh, they now are a place where folks can create new art. Um, mm -hmm. So we... Uh, really grab somebody's attention with that because it's such an unusual... The, the aesthetic is so different, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I've collaborated with um, some NYC Resistor members, um, Adele Lynn and Holly Hudson, and then also uh, some uh, folks from uh, Crash Space, um, uh, Jake... Uh, who does 
just amazing um, uh, generative art and processing. Um, so we have some of uh, uh, some of his running uh, on the Vectrex here. Okay, live. Live. Um, so uh, this one is um, emulating the uh, uh, the old X screensaver. This actually is one of mine, this is not Jake's, Walking but um, and I can actually click and uh, take control of it. Uh. And right. you know, control where I want them to go. So it's now this following is so my mouse. Handsome, and bright in person. Oh. Okay. Right. And then uh, this is a uh, this is a really fun demo because it's showing um, sort of a 3D effect, which the the original Vectrex wasn't capable of. It didn't have enough CPU to drive. Uh, seeing this live sort of Vectrex rendering. display is really pretty weird. I played a lot of Vectrex, and <laughs> it's it's a bit of a brain breaker because it's so complicated and advanced. Uh, so in this case, it's somewhere between um, a game of Snake and the uh, the old Windows uh, screensaver, the, the like pipes. 3D Snake? Yeah, it's 3D you Snake. Know, like the Star Trek had 3D chess when it's evolved Snake, probably. This yeah. could be the key. Um, so this is, uh, uh, no, switch back to the other right. one. Um, so these are, uh, uh, and these are written in processing, and it's uh, really easy for folks to um, to get started uh, generating so, uh, new art pieces. So you can write them in processing, and then just drive the display via USB to the board. That's right. To the to the vector. Yeah, this is. Uh, I think I need some more vector displays in my life. This, <laughs> this is really great. This will be a lot of fun. Uh, I've picked up quite a collection of them uh, uh, as part of this project. I and imagine. It's, um, uh, I currently have them uh, sort of on display uh, at the office and at Resistor. Um, converted some of them into uh, full-time uh, main cabinets. Uh, so I did a, a fun shop bot project to build a, uh, a small asteroids cabinet. Right. And I'm so bad at asteroids. It's a hard game. You can make a Tempest cabinet. Yeah. Uh, we could do a Tempest cabinet. Need, Tempest has that need, that yeah. special yeah. dial, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to, um, uh, have to find a dial that has the right feel. Right, that, that's, that's true. That could be a fun a pursuit. Have you, have you had to do a lot of repairs of of vector displays? Uh, so I see them being offered, you know, as is broken, yeah. just a dot in the middle. Uh, I, I have not. Um, as I mentioned, I'm mostly a digital circuit mm -hmm. kind of person. That the, uh, you know, opening up a CRT uh, yeah, to it's a, it's a monkey on the inside, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's a little worrisome. Um, and something that really should be done, you know, with uh, with the assistance of someone who knows what they're doing. Right, yeah, definitely want to be there the first time to sev tell people how to discharge the caps. That's, that's really important. Um, <clears throat> I have my old uh, studio mate taught me, I'll put it that way, he had a bad experience. Oh boy. It's an important thing to do. And uh, uh, there's certainly, you know, the parts are widely available. Um, a lot of the Vectrex consoles actually uh, have broken on the Vectrex board itself not the CRT. Okay, so the game engine itself uh, doesn't work. Right. Not a problem for us. Exactly, yeah. since we were bypassing that. Um, we had a workshop at Resistor where uh, quite a few folks had bought Vectrexes and Vectroscopes uh, and brought them in and we, we all soldered together boards and um, built uh, uh, display pieces. Um, two of them uh, were being had bought uh, Vectrexes as is, where is, you know, with um, where the CRT would power up, but it's just a beam in the middle, mm -hmm. which is a pretty good indication that uh, that the vector, the Vectrex it's game board is waiting for input. Yeah, yeah. right. Wow. Um, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go get one myself. And uh, so can 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 people in the future get get your VST board? You, we have so it's, it's open source hardware. The firmware is all open source. Um, okay. We've so uh, you, can, you can order boards from like. OSH Park. Right, so that they uh, they have I've shared the project there. Um, I really need to go back and revisit it uh, mm -hmm. and improve the uh, the op amp boards. Um, I've been contacted by a lot of folks who have uh, classic uh, um, arcade consoles that they want to rebrain sure. with these, um, but those need plus or minus twelve volt output, so that that will require uh, the external sure. amplifiers. And you, you do you do classes now and then at NYC Resistor? Yeah, or? we've had some uh, some fun workshops at Resistor. Um, Any more planned? We had a uh, uh, Crash Space had a had an art show that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, so it's uh, w nothing on the calendar now, but um, you know 
uh, resistors open um, Monday and Thursday nights for folks to come uh, hang out and hack with us, and uh, we can show off the hardware. All right, I should probably swing by. Um, this this is this is awesome, and uh, I I've remembered how much I love vector displays. Um, thanks so much for, for inviting me by, and yeah, thank you for hanging out. Really glad to to have uh, brought one of my toys over to, yeah. to show off. You're gonna have to take it with you. I, I won't borrow it. All right. Thanks. All for right. You're now in there. Thanks a lot. We're we're inside. In, in a uh, vector. vector space. I still look photorealistic though. I don't know. I'm not convinced. All right, and that was pseudo random.